Hello, welcome back. Um, I'm saying welcome back because I'm assuming you have watched part one of our Hello World smart contract tutorial series. This is part two, interacting with your smart contract. So if you haven't already written and deployed your smart contract, go back to part one, watch that first, and then come back here. But if you've done that already, then let's get started. All right, so now that you have seen your app being deployed in action, uh, there's all this great metrics going on in the Alchemy dashboard. We're now gonna get ready, get busy interacting with the smart contract. So what can we do to interact with a smart contract? We can read the value uh, you know, that we set, which is hello world. That's not too fun. But what we can also do is update that message. So you can set that new message to whatever you want and I'll show you how to do it. So um, the way you're gonna have to interact with it is with another script. So under our scripts file, uh, directory, we already have this deploy.js. So the next thing we wanna do is create a, um, let's call it interact.js. You can call it whatever you want. So um, in this file, because we already have our uh, tools set up, this ethers.js um, plugin that we have with uh, Hardhat, we're gonna be using the same thing that we did earlier where we kind of like, um, accessing the contract and checking the deploying it and checking the address we're gonna start doing a little bit more complicated stuff here but it'll be all good um, <clears throat> excuse me so again we're gonna have our async function main this is just where all the logic's gonna live for this script and then at the bottom here we're gonna call our main function uh, actually we could we could probably do the same thing here just for good hygiene uh, but you could just call this main function too if you wanted to and in here, what we're gonna want to do is to essentially, at the end of the day, all we wanna do is do like contract.update and then pass in our new message. So like goodbye world, that's kind of dark, but <laughs> uh, you know, our new message, you get the idea. So that's, that's ultimately what we want to do, but there's a lot of setup involved. So for example, we need our API key again. Uh, so actually API key is not something we have. So if I open up the .env here, we have the API URL, but uh, we might actually want to just use the API key later. So let us isolate this API key. Uh, it's just that last portion there. And going back, we can now do const API uh, key equals to um, process dot env dot api key cool and then we also want access to our private key so that's process dot env dot private key we also want access to uh, our contract address so you don't have to do um, a, a variable the way that i'm uh, initializing a variable right now but i'm just doing it because because i like i like to have this setup <laughs> so i'm going to put in contract address here and this contract address is the contract deployed to address that we saw earlier. So I'm just gonna copy that in over here. And then that way it's gonna load up there. And then the other thing we want is to have a reference to ethers. So let's get ethers from our hard hat plugin that we installed. And then uh, we are also going to bring in our contract. So this contract now is um, gonna be required from here, which I think maybe this is just an alternative syntax. Uh, there's probably different ways to do this, but um, let me just copy this over. Require. Uh, you can see here that we are loading in the uh, application ABI, which is uh, stored in this JSON file. So this is the contracts, hello world.soul slash hello world.json file, which is this thing. It's basically the interface that tells our um, our script, how do we interact with the contract? What are the methods involved? What are the state variables that we have access to? So um, that's why this is necessary. And then there's also two concepts that we need to know of that to round out the rest of the setup. There is a provider and there is a signer. And this is something that um, is a concept that's specific to the ethers.js library. Provider is essentially alchemy. It's kind of like a node provider. It basically gives you read access to the blockchain. So um, we're gonna be using alchemy as a provider. And then for signer, that's like you 
as an individual or you as the agent who is interacting with the blockchain and wants to send transactions, this requires gas costs, this re might require spending money, and so it requires you, um, the owner of a private key, to then sign transactions, and that's why it's called signer. So this is you. Um, and so the way that we are going to in in introduce those into our script is to define a new variable. Let's call this alchemy provider. And this is gonna be a new ethers uh, providers and specifically an alchemy provider. And then the network, again, you have to make sure that we're using the right network here. This is going to be Robston. And when you're deploying to mainnet to the real Ethereum blockchain, you can change that to mainnet, but for now it's Robston. And then you just put in the API key that we used here, uh, that we loaded here from earlier. So we can save that. And now we have access to the Alchemy provider. And what the Alchemy provider will also help us do is actually, um, it's gonna help us create that signer. So as the signer, I'm gonna be using the Alchemy uh, app as my entry point into signing all my transactions. So let's load up the signer variable here, new ethers wallet. Uh, and then we're gonna load my private key that I pulled from MetaMask. And then I'm gonna use the Alchemy provider as uh, my entry point. Cool, and then the final thing is the actual contract. So um, contract instance. So this variable is gonna be called hello world contract. And we're actually gonna be using this hello world contract inside the, the script function, finally. So hello world contract is going to be a new instance of ethers.contract. And the first argument here is the contract address. So we loaded that here from our M file. And then the second argument is going to be the contract ABI. So we had loaded this JSON file earlier, right? And inside this JSON file, we have the ABI. So we, in particular, want this ABI um, to be passed in here. And then we have the signer. So this is the signer that we generated and this is me. So now uh, what this line does, it, this is a very crucial line of code here. It tells our script that anytime we are now interacting with the hello world contract, we are actually interacting at this specific contract address. It'll be this one and not that first one that I messed up on. And it will have this interface. So it has the update function, which we wanna call later. And then it is going to be me uh, specifically the one, the guy who owns this MetaMask wallet uh, with 0x7e67 wallet address. It's gonna be me who's interacting with the contract. So hopefully that gives uh, you some good context on how that works. And in order for in us to implement what this is uh, saying here, we are first going to uh, read the message and this is just gonna be a sanity check real quick. So let me put it before this line. We're gonna do a sanity check. What is the current message that I was actually showing? So let's do await hello world contract dot message. And this is a getter method that's automatically generated on the contract because of the fact that this is a this message variable is a public variable. So because it's public, we automatically have a message function that allows us to read what that public variable is. So that's hello world dot uh, contract dot message. Once we get that, then we will console dot log the message is and plus message and then we should be uh, we, we should expect to see hello world the very first time we call this and it'll change every other time because we're changing the message uh, but then the next thing we want to do is we're going to say okay now we are updating the message i'm just putting it here for my own convenience and the uh transactions that we want to happen is um let me do this. It's again, we could do await. And if you're not familiar with the await, this is basically how we handle asynchronous functions. We just make sure that if we're calling an asynchronous function, we wait for it to complete first, and then we move on to the next line of logic. So we make the asynchronous function synchronous, and that helps us guarantee that uh, certain things are happening in order. So what we want to happen right now is to update. So, because uh, we're updating the message. So we do hello world contract dot update. Um, and you can call this like, this is the new message. You can pass in anything you want here and you can kind of do this multiple times too. But we're gonna store this uh, return value in a transaction 
and then we're just gonna make sure that this transaction gets mined in the blockchain. So tx dot wait, and then we're gonna do the same thing here where we get the message value. So uh, I'm just gonna name this a new variable called new message. We're gonna get the message, and we're gonna say the new message is new message, and then that is our interaction script. So let's save that. And then over here, we're going to run that interaction script by calling mpx hard hat run scripts slash interact dot js. And again, you do want to pass in the network flag for Robston, but because we had set that default, I don't think it matters. But let's just do it to be safe. So you can see here, all right, we got our first print. The message is hello world. And that is what we had deployed um, our contract with inside the deploy script. So you can see here, hello world, right? And then it says updating the message, which is that next line here. Uh, it's that next line here where we say updating the message. And then it actually updated the message, but we're now waiting for that transaction to get mined. So uh, remember earlier when we were getting our free Robston, our free uh, fake testnet Robston ether, it took a while. Um, again, this is also gonna take a few seconds because the network has to include the transaction and we're waiting for that to happen. So finally, we waited and then it uh, printed out the new message and it matches, this new message is, this is the new message, which matches the string that we are putting in here. So that worked. If you got into this step, give yourself a pat on the back because you have now deployed a contract to the test network. Um, you, this is really legit because uh, you can actually go to the Robston test network ether scan and if you click on this contract, you can see all the transactions coming in and out here, um, which there aren't that many because there was the original deploy transaction that made it made this contract exist. And then there's the update transaction, which we had just called with our deploy script. Now, um, there's not too much going on here, but you can actually see what's happening under the hood in your Alchemy app too. So if we go back to the dashboard, we can refresh this. And you see, boom, a bunch more requests going on, right? And that's because we made that update request. Um, so you can see here we are, um, this, this only shows 10 requests. So actually let's go to the Explorer and I'm gonna specifically select my Hello World Again app. That's the one I'm working with right now. I believe this uh, ETH, ETH underscore send raw transaction, that was uh, us making this transaction to, um, to update the message on the smart contract. And so I think if we decode this, we'll actually see what the uh, the value is. So hexadecimal to ASCII. Um, it doesn't line up that well. But, um, Okay, besides this gibberish, you can see actually the, I think there's there's just, it's it's a different encoding that we, it's not ASCII. So that's why there's all gibberish. But the part that is ASCII is this is the new message. So um, this is the transaction. The point of me showing you this is that this is the request that issues the update transaction with that argument. And then over here, we are waiting for that to, uh, to finish. And then there's a bunch of, um, you know, get block number, um, get transaction receipt. We're waiting for for it to go through, and then you you can see here uh, this earlier get transaction receipt. It had a null result, but then this get transaction receipt finally has um, the the receipt, the actual like values that of the completed transaction. So, and then now here we are at the at the bottom where we uh, requested the the message. So if we decode this. I believe it'll be the new message. This is the new message. So that's what you're seeing here as well. If we click on the transaction, then you can see we have, this is the new message. So yeah, hopefully, um, I know I'm showing you a bunch of different things going on here, but if you followed me, uh, followed along with all of the coding, then you kind of got a, an early glimpse into what it's like to write uh, not only the Solidity code right here, the Solidity Hello World smart contract, but also the deploy scripts uh, using the Ether.js library inside of the uh, Hardhat plugin. So yeah, 
All right, so that was pretty cool. We interacted with our smart contract that we wrote and deployed to the Robson test network. We got to update the message and see that new message being displayed, which is super awesome. So if you've gotten this far, give yourself a pat on the back. And in the next part of the, the third part of the series, we're going to actually verify our smart contract on a blockchain explorer called Etherscan. And this is gonna be super awesome because this allows everybody on the internet to interact with your smart contract in a really easy way. So if you're interested in that, watch the next part. It's gonna be somewhere, somewhere over here.